Hello guys and welcome back to another mod spotlight video. So today we're going to be covering Forbidden Magic, a very very cool add-on for Thorncraft. So another Thorncraft add-on spotlight, uh, but this one's really really cool. So I've been playing around with it a little tiny bit in one of my survival worlds and it has re adds a load of really really nice things. Uh, to Thorncraft. So we're going to have a look at a couple of them and we're going to go through all of it with you together because I haven't seen an updated version uh, spotlight thing for Forbidden Magic for a little while now. So very first thing where we're going to be starting off from is here. So Nether Shards. Uh, this adds seven new shards to Thorncraft itself and these are all based on the seven deadly, uh, seven deadly sins. Um, and you can tend to only get these in the nether from what I've heard. Uh, but we'll go through a couple of them with them now. So this got updated not long ago as well. Just a quick um, little announcement thing here. Um, this got updated not long ago. Um, and gluttony and greed shards are now obtainable uh, by different methods. The only way you could get them before was with the corruption enchantment on a pickaxe. But they've been added in uh, recently. So... Let's begin with Wrath Shards. They crystallize around acts of violence. The more excessive the physical force used, the more likely a Wrath Shard to appear. So I think these have changed slightly, so bear with me if I'm wrong, and I do very much apologize, but these happen, you tend to get these when you kill things in the nether. And by the sounds of it, the more excessive the physical force used, so the more damage that you do, the more chance you have of getting a Wrath Shard, if I'm reading that correctly and deciphering it correctly. The more damage you do, the more chance, the bigger chance you have of actually getting a Wrath Shard to appear. Um, second, you've got Sloth Shards, which uh, conceal when proxies and accidents are used to collect resources without effort. So this would be in sort of mob traps or Basically killing things without physically touching them yourself, but dying to sort of environmental things. So if they were to fall, drown, die in lava, well you can't drown in another because you can't get in water. But sort of like lava blade them or just push them off an edge, you have a chance of getting sloth shards. Whoops. Um, so that's how you get them. Envy shards are taken from those. Have those... Right, so Envy Shards are basically taken from Zombie Pigmen. Uh, killing Zombie Pigmen in the Nether should give you these shards. Um, I think that's the only way to get them. I haven't read or heard of any other way of getting them. Uh, Pride Shards materialize when a creature of truly good powers cut down the side. This is killing a boss in the Nether. So whether it be... I think it's all in the Nether. I'm not sure about doing this in the overworld. I haven't tested it yet. But... Say you got to go spawn a wither in the nether and then you've got to kill that wither in the nether to get a pride shard. So they're pretty difficult to get uh, in this method. There's an easier way later down the line which I'll show you. Um, gluttony shards, crystallize when somebody, someone feasts. That sounds like when someone's eating. I'm not 100% sure. This is new and I haven't found any information on this. So bear with me on that. Greed shards appear when enchantment is used to turn on profits. This is going to be when having fortune on something so say you were to go mine sank in the nether with fortune on it uh say like quartz you get let right we're gonna say you go to the nether with pickaxe with fortune three on it mine some quartz you probably have a chance of getting a greed chart i'm guessing that is how that works like i said these are all new not a lot of information on them as of yet but there'll be if there's if i find out and there's a huge update i'll let you guys know so only one that wasn't in that list was the Lush Shard, and this can be obtained by hitting things with a Riding Crop. Riding Crop is made pretty simply, two sticks and a piece of leather, no vis required, and then you'll get yourself a Riding Crop. Uh, you basically go beat them. You don't have to kill them with the Riding Crop to get the drop. Uh, it's done per hit. It's based on per hit, so you, as, every time you hit them, you have a chance of getting a Lush Shard. And there's one other shard as well, which is the Taint Shard, which isn't covered, and it's not covered under the Seven Deadly Sins one, so it does actually add eight shards. Uh, this one is obtainable by digging up Taint. Um, so any tainted lands you dig up um, which are sh with a special shovel, which I'll show you in a minute, and you have a chance of getting one of these shards here. Okay, so that's that covered. Now we're going to move on to the sort of um, items, sort of, like, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, the artifice sort of side of things. 
So very first thing we're gonna look at, and there's these two things which are new to me. Very first thing we're gonna look at is the shovel of the purifier. Um, sometimes it's easier just to remove taint and it, easiest way to remove patches of taint is just to physically remove them. If you're trying to do this with a normal shovel, it's gonna be quite slow. This shovel allows you to do it a little bit faster. Um, if you, uh, where is it? Dig through tainted land as effectively as normal earth. If you held in your hand and right-click the shovel, purify all flux give it and gas from a small radius at the cost of durability, you no longer have to clean up infusion mishaps with a piece of cobblestone. So this has two uses, basically. It'll remove tainted land, and you can also remove um, any flux goo or gas around your infusion altar by right clicking with it in your hand. Uh, while digging through a taint and shovel, there's a chance to twist the energy to release crystallized into taint shards. Unlike other tainted materials, the crystalline pattern keeps these shards stable enough to carry around. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can actually just dig through taint with this shovel and you have a chance of getting one of these. So the next thing I want to cover is pickaxe of distortion. By infusing the thorn pickaxe, there's taint you create a tool capable of cutting through difficult materials. Pick up the distortion effects hard infects hard materials with taint, weakening them. The harder material, the more effective the pickaxes are at removing it. Unfortunately, the effects of taint have an inverse effect when mining softer materials running the pickaxe less effective than just pouring the block with your bare hands. So basically what this means is you can take this pickaxe and anything that's normally quite hard to break is going to be easier and anything that's easy to break is going to be harder. So it basically flips um, flips the pickaxe over. So here we've got some obsidian. Hmm, would have been e would have made more sense if I did that in survival. Right, let's give that another go. Right, so let's give that another go. Right, there you go. As you can see, that breaks like super duper fast. Not as fast as I just broke it, but it does break pretty fast, um, which is quite nice. Really good way to get mine obsidian. This, however, stone normally demolished with the pickaxe. It would physically be faster to use your hand to do this than use this pickaxe. Um, so that's the sort of negative effect of it, which is pretty nifty. It does have like its downside, but it's really good for getting like obsidian and other stronger things. Cool. Um, I don't think there's anything else on that one. No, that is pretty much it. I'm not going to go over all the infusion things. I did have them all set up, but they are fairly simple stuff. Um, if you guys want a tutorial on it, let me know and I will do one. And I'll break everything down properly and give you demonstrations and everything. Cool. So moving on, we're going to have a look at Axe of the Skull Taker. So this is some monsters really boil your blood. Skeletons always clacking around and using you for target practice. All those creepers, they just creep around blowing things up like they own the place. You wish you could just chop off all their smug heads and place them on pikes. Fortunately, you've discovered an item that will let you just do just that. The axe of the skull taker has a chance to remove heads of monsters it slays. It might even work on other humans. Unfortunately, the infusion leaves the axe far too bloodthirsty to effectively clear through boring plant matter. So basically, what you're doing here is you're taking the thormium axe, which is normally used to cut down wood. Uh, you're going to infuse it with some wrath, a bit of like some of that anger and stuff like that. And you're going to put a diamond on it as well, along with a wither skull, because you're going to be taking heads, and this is going to be a little bit harder to obtain. But once you got this, you think, oh, may maybe it'll work as an axe as well. No, it doesn't work as an axe. You can't go cut down a tree with it. It's rendered literally useless on this stuff now. You're actually breaking at the exact same speed as your hand. Um, so it's no longer good for chopping down wood. However, it is good for chopping things heads off. So if you'd go up to something and be like, bam, 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 bam. Has an attack damage of seven, so it's pretty powerful, pretty nice stuff. Let's just rotate that back. Um, so it's a really, really good way to get things heads. I, I'm assuming it's going to work better on wither skeletons as well. It will have like a looting slash beheading enchantment on it, which is really, really cool. So the next thing I want to have a look at, which is apparently I got to look at you got to research to bring in nutrition first. Um, which has only just been added. This is one of the new things that's been added. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, people keep scolding you. They insist that you can't eat cookies all day or that nutrition doesn't work like that. Well, you've had it with these naysayers. The ring of nutrition provides a boost to the food and saturation values of most food you eat while wearing the ring on your finger. Side effects may include nausea, headaches, cramping, vertigo, diabetes, and sudden interest in... I don't know. 
I don't know. But um, <laughs> basically, it's got bad side effects. I don't know if it's that's actual side effects or just a little bit of a joke there. But these take a couple of gluttony shards. So you can see where these shards really come into play. Rash shards there. Standard auto shards there. Standard entropy. Uh, and then you get into this bit. Uh, Mana cake, which we'll cover in a second. And this one here takes some of them gluttony shards. Which is obviously obtained by eating, apparently. Uh, this takes a bit of mundane ring, a couple of this, you know, standard stuff. So that basically, say you eat cookies um, or bread, it's not going to give you a ton of saturation. But if you eat it with that ring, it will give you more saturation, as if you're eating like a steak, let's say. So that's a quite a nifty little tool. Take up one of your bubble slots here. Uh, so that's quite nifty. So, and then after that, that looks like it branches off on the Thormic Cake. This all basically got, the layout got changed the other day, so I'm still trying to get a little bit used to it here. Um, so Thormic Cake's the next one we look at. They've also changed the recipes. See, this is why I didn't do all the recipe things, because they've changed it. It used to be, that I don't think it used to have, no, it used to be two sugar, and now it's two gluttony shards, because these are obviously more obtainable now. Um, if there's one thing you love, it's cake, but why... You would eat its delicious goodness all day if you could, but it always runs out in the end. To remedy this, you've devised a recipe to infuse cake with uh, longevity enhancing ma magic. The Thormian cake lasts significantly longer than a mundane one and will slowly replenish itself as long as there's a sliver left. The enchantments are unstable, however, and the cake cannot be moved again through conventional means once placed down. So we place down a cake here, we can't move it. We can eat from it once we our health gets lower, which we'll do later, uh, or our hunger gets lower, we'll go eat. Um, but for now, we're just going to continue on with this. Uh, but it's quite cool. Basically, you can eat the cake. It lasts a little bit longer, so I'm going to guess it's got more bites in it. And then as long as you've got like a tiny little bit left, it will regenerate itself, which is quite nice. Um, so the next one I'm going to look at is Collar of Pain. Sometimes people just want to get hurt, especially if there's benefit. The Collar of Pain has all the ca capabilities of Amulet of Vis. Amulet of Vis holds 250 of each Vis, and it will recharge your wand from your bobble slot. Uh, Collar of Pain... Uh, with added bonus that it will generate this whenever you take damage the more you get hurt the more of this it generates so that's pretty nifty you can have that it takes a little bit of lush shards and stuff like that uh, but that's pretty nifty and then basically every time you get hit by something uh, you can get this in your little necklace and then recharge your wand from it so it's quite cool if you're running around with your wand um, right cool so the next part I want to have a look at really really fun bit is they flip these over it used to be the way around uh, the the Diabolist Fork. You've created a tool to help you tinker with various infernal contraptions. The quartz prongs on the Diabolist Fork allow you to attune itself to arcane energies, along with being used to tune devices. The fork also makes for a functional weapon. Uh, more information appear on the following pages. Uh, the fork is used to slay a compatible creature with a blank imprinted crystal in your inventory. You will imprint on the crystal and the imprinted crystal can then be used to attune a wrath cage to that monster. The fork can also be used to adjust which essentia type a wrath cage is using for fuel. Simply right click on the wrath cage with the diabolist fork to cycle between the three different fuel types. Cool. So this leads us on to the wrath cage. We'll quickly have a look at this. Sometimes it's not enough to kill something. It's sure slaying a single monster. Maybe rather cathratic. I can't say it. <laughs> uh, but imagine just mowing down a crowd of obnoxious little jerks. To end that, you've discovered a way to recreate the monster spawners found in the ancient ruins. Unlike the original monster spawners, the Wrath Cage responds to redstone controls instead of the presence of human beings and can run much faster than the ancient devices. Cool. That's fine, that's fine. Um, so basically, these Wrath Cages are really, really awesome. I'm just going to show you one last thing, which is the imprinting crystal. Oh, wait. There's more pages. However, you have a duplicate version method of infinite creation. For every creature spawn, the Wrath Cage requires a bit of essentially pipe into its internal reserves. The device will accept different types of essentially depending on the creature. Attuned to alternative piping iron cages of fuel and can accept the Cydia for some reason also. Right click in the Wrath Cage with a dial. Diabolist fork will cycle the cage between the different fuel type changing which essentially applies to the suction to. To attune the Wrath Cage with specific creature right click it with an imprinted crystal saying a compatible creature with a diabolist fault while carrying a blank imprinted crystal will attune the crystal to that monster <sighs> so to make this <laughs> sorry you do need to put a diamond inside of crucible with 10 candida and 10 potentia best way to do this with your alchemical construct cool 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 so once we got one of these let's actually go back into our creative game mode there we go oh Let's get a game mode one. There, done. <laughs> um, so once you got this, 
There are several different creatures you can actually attune this to. This looks a lot bigger than what it was. Um, it looks like it has, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, it looks like you can actually have some of the Twilight Forest mobs on here, which is quite cool. Um, but let's get into this. So let's start off with a nice easy one. Cow. Cow is a good one. So as you can see, I've got a zombie in there. Right click it with the cow. It will remove the other one. Actually, it will remove the other one, put it in your inventory, and then put the cow one in there. So as you can see, let's go back to the normal page. This is going to require Beaster to operate. It also takes other fuel types. So it'll take Ira or Decidia. You right click with your fork and it'll do that for you. So you can change between the fuel types. We're going to go with some Beaster here. And we're going to go over to Thorncraft and we're going to go down and grab some Beaster, which is right there. Let's actually duplicate that because it's going to take a lot of it. And then we're just going to fuel that with that. And then cow should start sporting. Also, this can be controlled with redstone. I'm just going to show you that now. There you go. Everything's going and spawning and stuff. Cows are spawning in. We don't want cows spawning in, but they are spawning in. And it's taking a load of stuff. And you can see in here now, it does actually have 64 beaster in its internal reservoir. And we've got loads of things. So it is quite good. It's going well. Um, hopefully it takes that last one out. And I can show you the rest. Cool. There we go. And we can turn that spawner thing off. Go away. Go away, cow. There you go. Turn it off and it will stop. Redstone signal will turn that thing off. Sweet. So what else can we put on this? We can put Ira and Decidia. So let's grab a little bit of both of them and we'll just have a look and see that. Some Furnace. There's some Ira there and some Decidia there. Nice. So let's, let's do uh, Decidia first, because Decidia is the only one I've never ever played with. So let's pipe some Decidia into there. Hmm. Right, that might still be sucking the other stuff. Okay, it says it's meant to take a Decidia, but it doesn't look like it's taken the Decidia for some reason. Maybe because it's still got that in it? Oh, because I got the redstone control on it. Derp. There you go. Turn that on. No, it's still going to take from its internal reservoir of Beaster. So, but you can power it with all the different things. Ira and Decidia and whatever one. So, as you see, uh, let's go into here. It'll tell you which ones. Zombies are going to take Corpus. Uh, let's have a look. Villager will take Luckrum. Angry Zombie will take Cognito. Um, Helmet Crab will take Metallum. So it all takes different things. Cow takes Beaster. Have a look, see if we can find another one that you guys will know. Slime will take Limus. Um, chicken will take Volatus, which is the feather one. So yeah, you can spawn all kinds of manners of things. Really, really, really cool thing there. Quite dangerous to make it, but it is definitely worth it because obviously that's how dangerous it is to make it. Very dangerous instability. Raft shards and all the like. A lot of diamonds and a lot of water jars and an entire Thormium block as well as all the Essentia for it as well. Look at it all. It's crazy. Um, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. Really, really cool thing. So, next thing I want to move on to is have a look at this. This is probably one of the coolest things added uh, to this mod. It just adds to your game so much more. It's called Chameleon Tools. So, Chameleon Tools are like three tools in one. When first enchanted, right-clicking while sneaking with the tool chain in your hand, change it to a blank new enchantment so it land your enchant with a completely different set of enchantments. Each tool can hold up the three separate enchantment sets which can be altered between by right clicking while sneaking. Mm. Tools have no innate way to remove enchants once fully enchanted so make each enchantment count. Uh, so you can do this on a sword, uh, a pickaxe, an axe, a shovel, a sword. We can have three enchantments on each. So we're going to grab the pickaxe. I'm going to show you that. Actually, we'll grab the sword as well. And we can kill all these goddamn cows. So you can't do anything. Right-clicking at the minute won't do anything because we haven't got anything enchanted. So we go like that. Enchant it. There we go. We've got efficiency, fortune, and unbreaking. Nice. Go like that. And as you see, the top of the pick changes color. Unlocks both the new slates for us. Place that in there. We'll do it again. So we've got Silk Touch on that one. This is perfect because now we look, 
we go, oh, look, let's fortune that one with that. Or we can go, oh, no, let's silk touch the block instead with this one. And then you can go again. And you got to make sure that it's on the, the new set of enchantments before you enchant it again. And as you can see, XP boost three, extra XP from mob kills. So we can go kill a mob with that and we get extra XP for it. We do the exact same with this one. We've got Wrath on that one and everything. I think Wrath is actually added by this. Yeah, Wrath adds even more power to your weapon, which is really, really cool. Look at that, plus 15.75 attack damage. Its base is seven. That's how crazy this is. Right, let's go like that. Sharpness. Give us plus 12. Shift again. Go in there again. Sharpness and I'm breaking. So nice. So we got all these different things. Now look at this. Bam. What else did we get on that one? Did we get... Oh no, that's just sharpness. That's unbreaking sharpness. That's sharpness, unbreaking wrath and the XP boost. So we get even more XP from killing mobs with this sword now, which is really, really cool. So if you want to have an XP farm, you can have a sword purely for slaying things like that. Right, so we're going to chuck them two away. You can do the exact same with these two as well. And obviously there's other ways you can you can enchant, you can infuse uh, levels onto things as well. So you can have up to Wrath level 5. It's going to get quite expensive. As you see there, it's going to take quite a lot, but it's definitely worth it. And it's going to take you a Diamond Sword each time, as well as three Wrath Shards each level as well. So you got to do it up in levels by levels. But, right, moving on. So, last two things I need to cover real quick. Actually, there's a couple of things I need to cover. First one is the Infernal One Core. Great and powerful Thaumaturge like you deserves a powerful and imposing one benefit in your station. Some hippie silverwood one won't cut it. You'll need one that serves your scepter of authority. You've discovered a way to cre create a wand infused with the power of nether. The Infernal One Core can hold up to 150 vis and will slowly replenish your supply of Ignis to 20%. While within nether, the one will also replenish its other aspects to 10%. So, whether you're in the nether or not, it will supply... Ignis up to 20%, while in the nether, all the other aspects will go up to minimum, uh, maximum of 10. So it'll never, your one will never drop below 10% of its uh, thing. So you always have 15 of each in there and 30 of Ignis as long as you're in the nether. Not too bad to me. Moderate, a little bit of um, Essentia, but not too bad. One also immunes you with some protection from the nether's hazards. Extinguishing if you are on fire or protecting your cell or protecting you from the effects of withering as long as it is in your inventory. So as long as you've got the one in your inventory, you won't actually take any wither damage, which would be really good for fighting the wither, especially when you've got to try and get yourself some pride shards. Um, if you're on fire as well, if it's in your inventory, as soon as you get out of the fire, it'll extinguish you. And if you have the one in your hand, you will take zero fire damage altogether. Really, really cool thing. Next one I want to show you is the Tainted One Core. Tainted lands of places... Uh, tainted lands are places of great and terrible power for those thermoturges and now tap into them. Tainted One Core will store up to 150 vis of each type and slowly replenish itself up to 10% in every aspect as long as it's being held inside of a tainted land while the one is in your hand it can also feed off taint coursing through your veins randomly restoring this every time you take damage from flux taint so if you got like a lot of flux that's quite a nifty one or you're in flux lands quite a lot just kill this cow <laughs> bam um so you're in tainted lands or like yeah if you're in tainted lands quite a lot or you get a lot of flux through it can recharge your one for you which is pretty nifty um, but i'm not one to use that too much it's up to you it's all sort of preference and your game style um one other thing i want to cover is lord of the hellfire best one of the best things ever best add-on for thorncraft getting stranded in the nether is worse you go through all the trouble of grabbing what you need but before you can go home some stupid gas decides to rain on your parade by blasting a portal shut sure this can be amended by carrying a flint and steel around but who actually walks around with those things You've discovered a way to use this in your wand to light fires on certain materials. Right, right click with a focusless wand in your hand on top of netherrack or obsidian to light flame using some ignis from your wand. So if you, you use a little bit of ignis from your wand, go like that. Look at that. That is so cool that you can do that with a wand. Absolutely love that feature. One of my favorite. Right, so let's have a look at these taint things. I haven't looked at them yet, so we're going to be looking at these together and we'll move on to the mod crossovers. So tainted stone. 
Tainted lands aren't very safe places to be. Fabrious taint hungrily spreads and crawls over most surfaces, eventually em enveloping them and making them unsafe to walk on. The fibres don't appear to be harmful to tainted creatures or materials, however. By mixing flux taint with regular stone, you create the magical material which is structurally stable but resistant to the spread of fibrous taint. Tainted stone can be used to build surfaces in tainted lands which are safe to walk on. Not that building in tainted lands is advised. <laughs> so you can actually make like tainted bricks. You can use taint shard or tainted goo with some bricks like that. And I'll give you nine. Pretty similar to the arcane one. You can also make stone bricks as well. Let's actually have a look at them and see what they look like. Because they seem like pretty funky blocks. So let's have a look at these. See, that, that is a nice looking block. I'm not sure if it's going to cause taint. hope it doesn't. <laughs> Right, let's have a look. Let's just stand here. No, there's still a forest. Come stand on here. Still a forest. That's fine. That is absolutely fine. Cool. So it's not going to cause taint, but you can use taint to make taint safe stuff. That looks really, really nice. I do like the sort of brick as well. Really, really cool looking stuff. So tainted trees as well. The sick twisted runoff of magical experiments can take on a strange life of its own. Most plants are unable to survive in tainted lands, but you finally find a way to grow one that can by Stepping by steeping a sapling in taint, you create a tree that can thrive in tainted lands. It's wood, so it can be turned into planks, which are resistant to fibrous taint, allowing you to build structures safe from spreading taint. Tree also seems to bear fruit, but eating them is not recommended. Tainted log can turn into hex coal. Hex coal, that looks funky. It's got a random burn time on it, so you don't know how long that's going to burn for. Um, tainted logs look pretty funky as well. That looks awesome. I really like the look of that. Right, let's have a look at these tainted trees then. So we've got some tainted logs. Whoops. Got some tainted logs and some tainted wood here. We've got some tainted fruit as well. And this hex coal looks absolutely crazy. So let's play around with a little bit of this. These logs look really... Oh, wow. And do, do we just pull the fruit off like that? I don't know. That looks like fruity-ish. Unless it's just random. That looks cool. It sounds really cool. When you... it sounds cool when you play it as well. And then this one here is just like your standard purple log. Which is quite nice because you don't get a lot of purple sort of log things like that. And it looks really, really, really nice after the purple planks. Tainted fruit. Yeah, let's not eat that one. Uh, but you can get tainted fruit off of it by the looks of it. Cool, cool, cool. So let's just double check we've got everything. Uh, we're going to do the enchants very last. Actually, this one here, one focus of uh, blink. The only thing that sucks more than getting up is having to walk places. So much work. What's the point of being a fancy magician if you still have to use your feet like everyone else? The blink focus eases the hardships of having to put one front foot in front of the other. Just point your one at a distant location where you've got to teleport yourself there. Now you need a shower focus and you'll be all set. <laughs> Uh, so this thing uses sloth shards, obviously, because this is the lazy magician way. This is the fun way of being a magician. Uh, so let's quickly grab our one. Let's actually play with this because this looks so cool. Oh no way! How much? Do you, how much does it use? Three Padicio per cast. Not like terrible. Okay, so I can't teleport all the way over there, but I can hit that bit there. Oh no way! Can I hit the wall? No, you can get quite far with that thing though. I really like that. That is awesome. Nice, nice, nice. Right, so that, as far as I know, other than the enchantments, which we're not covering yet, is all of the normal stuff. We're going to go on to mod crosser. Actually, no, we got normal stuff up here as well, which we'll have a quick look at right this very second. So I covered the riding crop already. Crystal scribing tools. Combining elemental shards with your inkwell results in some interesting effects. The crystal scribing tools seem to have seem to absorb knowledge as you use them to write. Once the well is completely empty of ink, you can absorb this knowledge for a small burst of research points by holding the tools in your hand and right-clicking. Unfortunately, this burns the tools out and turns it back into mundane. So you can use this. Um, you can basically infuse it with. You need some more dye or inkwell. Two uh, shards of anything, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to put this in the table, you're going to research with it. When the ink runs out, you basically take it out, right-click it, and it's going to give you uh, 
um, some knowledge and it's going to give you some research points and stuff like that which is quite nice quite a nice little addition there and then basically all you have to do is reinfuse it like that if you want to carry on using it or you can just refill it with some normal ink and use it as your normal tools cool next one is primal tools you've learned things that humans weren't meant to know seen things humans weren't meant to see and been places humans weren't meant to go obviously getting the primal audio pearl you literally go all the way through thorn graft uh, so what these experiences have taught is how to refill your ink well all these experiences and it's taught you how to refill your inkwell <laughs> by utilizing the strange properties of the primordial pearl you can create a set of scribing tools that will never run out of ink at the at the cold dark end of time when the light of a million stars has died out the primal scribing tools will still be ready to scribble onwards really really cool things there so that's how you make the primal scribing tools Emerald transmutation, you discover the way to multiply emeralds by stepping by steeping emerald fragments in lucrium harvested from other substances. So uh, like normal transmutation where you get three nuggets uh, per piece, you get four emerald fragments out of this and this is can be used to make uh, emeralds and you can make more of them by dropping the crucible with two lucrum and two vitreous. Really cool things. And the very last thing I want to cover before we go on to mod integration, I, there's a lot more than I thought there was. Uh, there's no sight more pathetic than a soggy Thormathurge. For all your great and mirac miraculous powers, you still have to go jump in the nearest lake and hunt for squids every time you want to refill your inkwell. You've done squid hunting by infusing... You're done squid hunting by infusing a rose with tenebrae and... Vit Victus, you create a flower that spreads like a weed and whose petals can be crushed for ink. So you make this unreal rose bush and then you put it in the thing. It'll give you two shadow ink, which you can use to refuel your tools. Save you jumping in the lake and killing squids. <laughs> right, so moving on, uh, we're going to cover the crossovers now. So the crossovers are the fun bits here. So we got the blood magic crossover, which is what we're going to cover first it's got schools of magic here there's also ours magica uh, crossover as well but i don't have ours magica installed so i won't be able to do that today i uh, might try and do it in another video uh but blood magic so very first thing we want to look at is the blood core so you've created a bridge between thaumaturgy and alchemy alchemical wizardry the blood one can store up to 100 this and gradually fill itself with life points so that's really really cool you can fill this one with life points um but when you make it you're also going to get this thing called an inner blood rod to, um to fill this up, you've got to put in a blood order with 20,000 life points, a tier 4 one, it'll give you a blood rod. And then basically, you got to shift right click it and, or I think it's the first person who picks it up it binds it to. Or you just right click it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, basically this thing will also charge from your life points. Even if you run out of life points, it will stop at 3 hearts when you've got 3 hearts left. And it won't kill you. Um, however, when we get to this stage here, if you make the staff, which takes a demon blood shard from blood magic and two blood rods, this one will kill you if you don't have enough things. This also does quadruple the recharge rate of the one though, which is really, really nifty. Um, additionally, we've also got our chemical caps. Uh, very effective at channel aqua only using 80% of the normal viscose so everything else they offer a 90% rate so the same as the silverwood one just better on aqua if combined with a bloody one core alchemical caps discount the amount of LP consumed by the one costing only 900 LP per vis the cap also causes all attacks from blood one to inflict weakness so it adds if you put the cap on it you get a little bit more um, I'm not exactly sure but it looks like it uses life points to give you some more discount on it, which would be really, really cool. Um, but yeah, so you got you got that there, you got the caps, you got the staff, and then you got this thing called the Scriven Scrivener's Tools. Um, this is a blood magic one. It also refills off life points, 25 life points every time you use a piece of ink. It takes a bucket of blood. Wheat blood orb, glass bottle and feather, you will get the blood orb back. So don't worry. I think that has to be bound to you as well. So bear that in mind as well. Moving on, we've got the Rapier of the Strix. This is a really, really cool. Basically, this doesn't do a lot of damage. If you have a look, it's got plus one attack damage. But it will dry and drain life points from anyone's network, whoever you attack. So if you have someone tanked up in blood armor attack them with this rapier and it will start drinking life points from their network it'll also stop them 
from being able to refill their life points. So even if they have an automated system, it's going to stop them from a little while from being able to pull any life points into their um, soul network, which is really, really cool. So no more OP players on any servers you play on. Um, so next thing is last th integration for Blood Magic, I do believe. Yes, is this. This is so cool. The Eldritch Blood Orb. This will hold 80 million life points. It's very expensive to make, as you can see here, but it will hold 80 million life points. It does have Warping 5 on it as well, so it's going to give you some warp effects, but it's up to you if it's worth it. Um, personally, I think it's pretty cool and really, really nice, uh, but I'm not sure if it's worth the Warping 5. We'll have to see uh, compared to the Transcendent. But... That is it for Blood Magic. So now we're going to move on to Batania, and then we're going to wrap this thing all the way up. So Batania integration, really, really cool. There's loads of things on this one, including some flowers. And um, we got Living with One Core. This is the first one. Um, Living Wood has the fantastic fantastic ability to manipulate mana when combined with the right regions it can even convert mana into this so you need to add all of the runes pretty much onto this it's missing a couple of the other ones but basically all of the season ones oh there goes my phone um there goes all the season ones uh all of the elemental ones and in a rune of mana as well and that's going to give you a dormant living wood wand um so let's have a look. Let's have a quick look in there. And it's going to take some. We have a look in here. It's going to take some mana to reawaken this one. So if we have a look at uses, it's going to take a little bit of a mana pool there. So if we chuck it in here, we've got an infinite mana pool. Chuck it in, and we've got ourselves a living wood rod. Cool. So we've also got caps in this one as well. We've got two caps as opposed to the one here. Uh, the first one you're going to look at is Mana Steel Caps. Some very useful properties when it comes to mana manipulation when crafted in one, into a one cap. Offers 90% vis rate, exact same as Silverwood. If combined with a one that can consume mana, it also makes the mana conversion process more efficient. Um, in order to be used in creation, the one that inner Mana Steel Caps must be infused in a mana pool. So again, you have to drop these things into a mana pool. Fairly simple to make Mana Steel Nuggets. Come over here, drop them in like so. Can't remember how much they actually use. Let's have a look. Takes that that takes like minimal amount to make them, and then chuck that in there like so. Go like that, and then we can get our living wood rod. Go like that and go like that. Oh, we we'll make that. It takes seventy-two, and that's got a capacity of a hundred on that one. Really nifty looking wand as well. Cool. So, moving on from there, you got Dreamwood Staff. Um, living wood is useful material, but can't seem to withstand the amount of arcane power needed to make a staff. The elves' dream wood seems to be up to the task, however. Staffs made of dream wood hold significantly more of this than the equivalent wand and are able to apply more potent power when using foci. As living wood, dream wood wands must be infused in mana pool to fully awaken again. So, to make this, you're going to have to make some dream wood cores exact same way as the last one, um, but with dream wood in the middle instead. Obviously, you need to infuse. Oops. Let's grab one more, and then we're gonna go. Boop. And boop. there you go. And then we have got two of them like so. Then you need a piece of dragon stone on that one as well, and that is gonna give you the Dreamwood Staff Core. Nice. So this one here, do we have to awaken it? No, it's fine. <laughs> it's awake. It's awake, man. Um, I'm not exactly too sure how much that one holds. Where is it? Maybe we maybe we gotta cap it. Let's grab these caps because I want to show these ones. You have to infuse these ones as well. This is where it gets interesting. Wow, that takes a lot. You wouldn't be able to do this in survival. But look at that, 250. And look at the rune it. Look at the rune things on it. That is so cool. I really like that one. You could do that with um with add-ons. With Thormic Tinkerer add on. Uh, but yeah, continue on. So we're going to have a look at these. These are Elementum Caps. So Elementum Caps, Alfheim seems to be a world steeped on magical power, and Elementum is no exception. When crafted into one cap and treated with the right materials, Elementum Caps have exceptional ability to channel this when combined with the Wonder Staff that uses mana, or we also reduce the mana conversion rate. Elementum's pretty pink color is just icing on the cake. Right, so to infuse these things as well, they're very expensive to infuse. They're gonna take two uh, Gaia Spirits, 
and you're gonna have to have the uh, ele four the four elemental runes as well as lot as well as uh, elemental essentia waiting to go in as well. And you're gonna need to do that twice to get them, and then you can put them on your staff. Or you I think you can put these on here actually. Let's have a look. Let's go like that. Can we put them on the Dreamwood wad rod? We can. That's got a capacity of 100 as well. That's quite nice, actually. That's a nice little one there. doesn't have the runic thing, and this one does, but it's still pretty cool. So, moving on. We covered that bit already. I thought that was a Britannia integration. Turns out it's not. The last one was quite all over the place, and I wasn't too sure. So, moving on to the flowers. So, we got the uh, Eucala Daisy. Uh, three essences are extremely useful sources of essentia and are a very important ingredient in Thaumaturge's salt. Unfortunately, it can be very difficult to come by. Wisps aren't exactly common and no one, no self-respecting Thaumaturge wants to stop s stoop to smashing open a node. By combining Thaumaturgy and a hedge magic, and a hedge magic, you've created a flower that can use mana to rip open the fabric of reality. The rip isn't stable enough to form a node, but it does stay open long enough to drop a single wispy strand of essence. Applying a redstone signal to the red the, to the flower causes it to stop. So a little bit expensive to make, but it's pretty cool. You can basically get um, essence off of it, which is very useful later on down the line. Uh, what have we got next? We've got whisper weed next. Busy Thaumaturge has better things to do. Run around in the field of research. Things save your tail many hours by pulling stacks of cobble apart. You create a flower that is in touch with the supernatural flow of the universe. Whisperweed is a magical plant which uses mana to whisper scraps of arcane knowledge into the ears of anyone nearby. Prolonged exposure to it is unearthly. Murmurs may have a negative effect on your physique, however. Okay, so that one basically gives you little bits of research. It saves you running around and looking for things, I think. I don't think it completes the research. I think you still got to do it on the research table. So, next one. Taint Thistle. When you've unlimited arcane power at your fingertips, small trolls like mocking up flux goo off your laboratory floor seen beneath you. Fortunately, you you now have a little help to clean it up for you. The Taint Thistle will suck up any flux or gas nearby and use it to generate mana. Really, really cool stuff there. So, if you have a lot of flux and stuff, you can generate mana with it in your infusion altar and just send it to a mana pool, basically. Might do that and see how much I can actually get off my infusion altar. And then we've covered that already. Cool, cool stuff. So, the last thing we need to cover is enchantments. This is where it gets fun. Um, let's start up here. Consuming. Stick a 5 and empty your pack worth of junk. You devise an enchantment that will automatically destroy common unwanted materials. Any dirt, cobble, Gravel or nether wrap mine by consuming tool will be destroyed instead of falling on the ground. So you can put this on any tool you want, shovel, shovel or a pickaxe by the sounds of it, because you're not going to use an axe to do any of that stuff. Uh, but it will destroy all of it, which is quite nice. You can put that on your chameleon tool and have it as one of your sets if you really wanted it to, um, which is quite nice. Educational. Create an enchantment to infuse a weapon with very essence of knowledge and learning. Hammering such into a monster's head will result in them dropping more experience, uh, depending on the level of the enchant. So you can actually get more experience off of things, which would be quite good for mob farms. Uh, next is Capitalist. You've discovered a weapon enchantment that allows you to profit from taking lives. Every time a Capitalist weapon slays a hostile creature, there's a chance to drop an emerald fragment. If a Capitalist weapon is used to kill a villager, it will instead drop one of the villager's emeralds. So if you put this on, you can actually get like these little uh, fragment things here. And off of normal things, you've got a chance of getting there. If you kill a, Zim, uh, a villager with it, you will actually get a whole emerald off of it, which is really, really cool. You can set up a little uh, emerald farm, villager farm, just kill them. Uh, so enchantment corrupting. This is the really good one that you want. Um, basically, it, was, it means you don't have to go into nether. You put this on a pickaxe, and if you mine infused stones, so like the order infused stone and stuff like that from Thorncraft, if you mine it with this a uh, pickaxe with this enchantment on it, you have a chance of getting one of the seven deadly sin shards without even having to go into nether, which is really, really nifty. Again, you can have this one on your chameleon tools set, so if you're out exploring caving, you can just try it and get nether shards that way. Also, combine it with fortune for a better, um, a better chance, really. Um, and then the very last one is Wrath. So you need to more extensive. You need basically this just adds so much more damage to things. It can still be compatible with sharpness, bane of bots, and smites. So you can stack them together. Uh, if you have Wrath level five on this, you literally just demolish everything. It will use a diamond sword every level if you do it in an infusion way. 
Uh, best way to do it is put it in here, see if you can get an enchant off of it, and then infuse off of it that way. Um, and then the last couple here, Fiery Core does what it does. Basically, you puts a Fiery Core uh, like this one. Pickaxe of the Core will a uh, chance of getting native clusters and stuff like that. Um, that allows you to put that on the Chameleon tools. Um, this one here, Impact, Shovel of Earth, move your mind with larger areas than most tools with your Impact enchantment. You can see so your Chameleon compare. Ugh. With your with the impact enchantment, so can your chameleon pickaxe and shovel. So basically, it's going to do like a large, large area chameleon tool impact enchantment. Mines three by three area blocks instead of just one, making mining and flattening areas a little bit easier. So that one's quite cool as well. Basically, do a three by three upgrade to your tool and void touched void metals ability. Void touch enchant gives you a chameleon tool the same regenerating quality as void tools. Um, so it's going to give you a bit of void on your tools, but it will repair itself in the process as well, which is really, really nifty. It means you don't have to keep repairing them yourself. So I think I've covered everything. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've done everything. And hello guys, sorry I ran out of space, but let me just quickly finish off the outro here. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys have found it useful and informational and stuff like that, or maybe just found yourself a mod that you didn't know about. Um, which is the best one because I love converting people over to Thorncraft and its add-ons. Uh, but thank you guys very much for watching. Have yourselves a very fantastic day. Make sure you like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more tutorials and spotlights in the future. And I'll see all of your beautiful faces in the next video. Goodbye.